as well as supporting input from devices like a mouse and keyboard, Unity also supports input from touch screens. Because of the nature of touch input, it is handled slightly differently. We still use the input class as we would for other input devices. However, since the user may be making multiple touches at once, they are stored as an array. If we want to retrieve a specific touch, it is efficient to use the getTouch function of the input class. The getTouch function reads in a single integer and returns a touch from the array at that index. For example, if we want to access the first touch in the array, we can create a touch variable and set it equal to input.getTouch passing in a zero. A touch variable is an instance of the touch struct. A struct is very similar to a class. It is a collection of variables and functions just the same as a class, and for this example, they can be thought of as the same. The touch struct has a number of properties that we can use in different ways depending on how we want the touches to affect our game. The finger ID property is an identifier that is unique to that specific touch for its lifetime. Using this, you can track the actions of a specific touch. Once the touch is no longer in the array, the touch has finished and other touches can have this ID. The position property is the position of the touch on the screen. This is a vector 2 measured in screen space. Screen space is measured in pixels from the bottom left corner. That means that axes are between 0 in the lower left corner and the screen's width in pixels on the right and screen's height in pixels at the top. The delta position property is a vector 2 that is the difference between the touch's position last frame to its position this frame. This is very useful for any system where you need to know the movement direction of a touch. In addition to the delta position, the touch struct also has a delta time property. This is the time since there was an update of the touch. Generally, touches are detected in the update loop. Under these circumstances, the delta time property would be the same as the time.delta time. Each touch has a tap count property. This is a measure of how many taps are made in quick succession. When a tap is recorded, the finger ID is maintained. However, if you have multiple fingers tapping at once, then this will be treated as the same finger jumping around the screen. The last property is the touch's phase. This is an enumeration called touch phase. The possible values for the phase are began, canceled, ended, moved, and stationary. The phase began will be returned on the first frame of the touch. Stationary is when the touch isn't moving. And moved is when the touch has changed position on the screen. Ended is returned on the last frame of the touch. The touch will have a phase of cancelled when the device can't handle the input of the screen. This might be where there are more touches than the device supports, or a large surface presses on the screen. We can also retrieve the entire array by creating an array of touch objects and setting it equal to the touches property of the input class. Now that we have our touch array, generally it is a good idea to iterate through them. By doing so, we can treat each touch individually based on its properties. To do this, we will use a for loop. In order to loop the correct number of times, we could use the length property of the touch's array. However, it is again more efficient to use the touch count property of the input class. From here, we can treat each touch individually. However, this might not be the way you want to treat touches in every circumstance. For example, there are times where you might want to write code that requires a specific number of touches for complex gestures. For more examples of touch-based input, see the assignments linked below.